Hello. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Sadie. Today I'm going to be talking about ways to keep a digital sketchbook instead of a traditional sketchbook and everything that entails. So I'll show you what a digital sketchbook looks like, how I organize it, and a simple hack I use to do life drawings from home. If you're like me, you prefer to work digitally. I use my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro and Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint. I love digital because it's super convenient and you have an undo button, which I use all the time. Digital is the most natural medium for me because I've been using it for so long, it's what I prefer. But you know what bums me out about working digitally? I don't have a physical sketchbook that I can flip through and look at all the shitty drawings I've done. I miss having a collection of doodles and drawings neatly presented. As far as I know, I could be wrong, there are no apps that simulate the experience of having a sketchbook. So I made my own workaround to this problem. Using scanned pages of open sketchbooks, I made mockups that I can use as a base layer of my drawing. So essentially the paper that I'm going to draw on. So here I'm opening up one of the sketchbook files that I have. I have multiple versions. Uh, this one is a landscape sketchbook. I have the layer that you draw on, on the very top and it has a clipping mask. So that way when you draw outside of the boundaries of the paper, it won't show. So it's doing like real paper. Just with my mouse, this isn't a masterpiece. Okay, so here I'm setting the blend mode to multiply, and doing that will show the tooth of the paper. So if, see, setting it back to normal, it'll be opaque, more like a gouache. But when you have that multiply effect, you can see the tooth and it feels more realistic. I also have the sketchbook on a separate layer from the background, so you can set colors behind the sketchbook if you want to get more colorful with it. Okay, so now I'm going to save the sketchbook as a PDF, so go to Save As, and I have folders on my computer designated for this, like I have a folder for pages and a folder for PSDs, that way it's just easy to find things and it's just super organized and it makes life easier. So just name this file, whatever, save it. push OK. And here you're going to uncheck the preserve Photoshop editing capabilities. You're going to go to the compression tab and then you're going to make sure the downsampling is to 300 or less. The lower you go, the more pixelated it might be, but it's going to lower the file size so that way you don't have a humongous file of like 200 megabytes. So I do recommend compressing your file that way work with reasonable file sizes. and just get a peek of that, it looks good. And I already have a pre-made sketchbook that I did before this. It's a portrait sketchbook, and I'm gonna throw in that test sketchbook page just to show you how I do it. So I'm gonna select the Organize Pages button, and then I'm gonna go to Insert from File, and then I'm gonna select that test page that I just made. And then I'm going to select the option last because I like to do my sketchbooks in chronological order. So I like the most recent to be at the very end. And also side note, if you don't have Acrobat, you can also do this online. I will link to an online PDF software. And so you can see that I've added washi tape and other fun elements on these pages like paper. Um, I tend to do this in my traditional sketchbooks. It adds a bit more personality, so I want to convey that in my digital sketchbooks as well. It's fun, I don't know, it just adds something more to it. And you can see the post-it note there. You can find things like this online, super easy. You can keep adding pages as you draw more and you'll never run out of pages because it's infinite, it's digital. One of the perks. I know you're probably asking, well, why don't you draw in a real sketchbook instead of all this extra shit that sounds like a lot of effort? Well, you know why? Because I half-assed my traditional painting classes in college and now I'm paying the consequences. Don't skip class, kids. Speaking of which, let's go back to traditional sketchbooks for a moment. A big purpose of having a traditional sketchbook is having the ability to do plein air drawings in public, like you're studying 
buildings or landscapes or people that you see in front of you. And if you're not familiar with the term plein air, let me read what Google says for you. Denoting or in the manner of a 19th century style of painting outdoors or with the strong sense of the open air. So literally just painting outside. Let me be real with you though for a moment. My social anxiety is way too damn high to go out in public and draw. Like, are you kidding me? I'm a hermit. I'm a true INTJ. Like, I don't want to sketch in public, but I still want the experience that plein air provides. What if I told you that you could draw beautiful places from around the world, from the comfort of your home? That sounds too good to be true, right? It's not. It's called virtual plein air. I started seeing this trend pop up in 2014 on Facebook. There were dedicated Facebook groups to people who did this specific style of plein air, virtual plein air. It was a huge thing, like every artist jumped on this trend at this point. But what is it? Okay, so virtual plein air is basically going to mapcrunch.com and I'll link that in the description below. Mapcrunch takes you anywhere in the world randomly and it's using Google Street View. You can use the little arrows and it'll move you up and down the street. So you can actually compose your composition or where you're standing. It's also awesome because it shows you places that you've never seen and even places you've never heard of. Yes, seeing it on a screen is not as great as the real experience, but I'm not a purist. Like, it's still good enough. Anyway, here's another example of a digital sketchbook that I have. This sketchbook is filled with landscape drawings that I did, and I used the virtual plein air technique. Um, I believe the one on the left was a place in Slovakia, and the one on the right was a place in Italy, and I definitely flourished a bit more than what was actually in the photo on MapCrunch. So I made it more of a sunset feel, like gave it a bit more mood to it, and that's totally okay thing to do. Like you don't have to mimic your location exactly as it is. Like you can interpret that however. And so now I'm just going through the process of exporting the PDFs again. And this time I have all of the sketchbooks in the same PSD file. And also, side note, I recommend saving the original PSD sketchbooks and not just having PDFs. That way you can go back and change anything if you decide that you don't like something. Um, but here I am exporting everything, separate PDFs. And that way I can combine everything into a complete landscape sketchbook that I can keep for my archives and keep adding to. In same settings and everything, the unchecking the preserve. Photoshop editing, and also doing making sure that the compression is at 300 or less. So now I'm gonna to go to the individual pages and I'm just going to open up one of them. So opening that one page, or that one PDF, and now I'm going to insert all of the other PDFs from file and dropping those in. And if I don't like the order of the sketchbook, I can always drag and move the images so that way they're in the order that I want. And then I'm gonna save the file and my landscape sketchbook is complete for now. If you want the sketchbook templates that I made, you can download them in the description below. I provided a link, um, and I tried to make them as true as possible, like they're actual sketchbooks that exist, like the yellow moleskin sketchbook, like that's in there. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this.